Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. Today, we'll be having a look at how to spawn in objects over the network so that all the other clients can see them, even ones that join late, and then we'll also be implementing a way to destroy them and make sure all the other clients see that happening. Hope you're looking forward to it, so let's get started. As always, if you want access to the project, there'll be a link down below to the GitHub repository, as well as links to any relevant pages on the documentation. So for the setup, we've got the same as the previous few tutorials where we've just got a host or a client button. And if I start as a host, a player spawns in for me. I can select my color, but that's not important for this tutorial. And then we can hit leave and we're back to the main menu. As well as that, we've got two new scripts. Let's have a look. So we've got the ball spawner script, which is currently pretty empty. All we have is a way to cache the main camera on start. And we'll be using that to determine where we click in the scene so it knows where to spawn in the ball. And then we also have the ball prefab, which I'll be showing you in a minute. And then in the ball script, all we have here is some code that you've seen before if you watched the previous tutorial. We have a network variable that syncs a color. So when this ball starts existing, if with a server, we pick a random color, and then that will be synced to all the clients. And all the clients do is then update the renderer color. So nothing here is new. It just says sync a color and make sure the ball is that color. Now let's go back into Unity and into the prefabs folder, because if we go to the ball, you'll see here it's just a sphere. We'll go into the scene view. A sphere as a child for the mesh. And then the parent has a network object component because this will be an object that spawned over the network. And then it has the ball script attached to it. And obviously the ball script references the renderer so that our code can actually update the color. And because this is being spawned in over the network, we actually need to go to our network manager and make sure that it's in the list of network prefabs. And finally, if we go to the player prefab, scroll down, I've added the ball spawner script to the player, and then that references the ball prefab so we can actually spawn it in. And now that we've covered the setup, we can get to the coding. So let's open up the ball spawner and get started. So the flow we want here is to check if we're left clicking and if we are, find out where in the world we're actually clicking and then use a server RPC to send that position. So we'll tell the server, hey, I clicked here and then the server will spawn in a ball at that location. So let's get started with that. We'll want to create an update method to take input. So private void update because we'll be using the old input system here for simplicity. And so we want to say if we're not the owner of this object, so if not is owner, then return because this script is on all the players and we only want this to work for our own player. Next thing to do is to check if we actually hit the left mouse button. So if we didn't, if not input dot get mouse button down zero, then return. So if we didn't hit the left mouse button, we don't care. But if we did, we then want to find out where in the world did we click. So we're going to say here using the main camera method. So remember we have a camera cached up here, main camera dot and we can say screen point, which is where we click to ray. And it can do a ray cast in the scene to find where we clicked. And we'll pass in here our input dot mouse position. And this returns a ray. So we'll say ray, ray equals main camera screen point to ray. And now we actually have to do the ray cast. So we'll say here if not physics dot ray cast, and that can take in the ray. The second parameter uh, is the actual data we get back if we hit something. So the raycast hit data. And this uses the out keyword because it's going to pass back out here this data. And then the third parameter is how far is the max distance of this raycast. Uh, we don't really care, so we'll just say mathf.infinity. Just go as far as you can. And yeah, if we don't hit this raycast, then return. And if we do hit the raycast, we then want to tell the server where we clicked. So let's make a server RPC for this. We've done this a few times now. So server RPC, private void, and we'll call this spawn ball server RPC. And this will take in a vector free because we need to tell it the position where we clicked. So spawn position, spawn pause. So then on the client side for the player, we'll call the spawn ball server RPC and we'll pass in this hit data that we get back, and that has a point property, which is where we hit in the world. So now to spawn in the object over the network, we need to start off by doing a normal spawn in Unity, which is instantiate, passing in the thing to spawn in, so the ball prefab, the position, which is going to be the spawn pause that we receive, 
And then finally, the rotation, we'll just go with quaternion.identity and leave it as the default rotation because we don't really care, it's a sphere. So now we spawn in the ball, but only on the server. So none of the clients will actually see this. Unless you're the host client, you'll see it, but no one else will. So we need to actually spawn in over the network. And what we can do here is we can put this into a variable. So network object, and we'll call this ball instance, like so. And then on a networked object, you can call, so ball instance dot spawn. So that will spawn it in over the network but we want to give ownership to the player that spawned it in and that will then allow them to do various other things with the ball later. So we can actually use the method spawn with ownership and it needs to take in a client ID. So it's the ID of the client who will be the owner and we just want to give it to the owner of the ball spawner. So whoever spawned it in becomes the owner. So we can say here owner client ID and we're done. So let's do a quick rundown before we move on to the ball script. So make sure that this player is our player. If it is, make sure we hit the left mouse button. If we did, find out where we hit in the world. And if we do hit something in the world, then tell the server where we hit in the world. And then the server will receive that message and they will spawn in the object on their own machine. And then they'll do the spawn with ownership method, which will spawn it on all the clients, even ones that join later on. and the player that spawned it in will have ownership. If we were to go into Unity now and give it a second, let it compile, and then we actually want to do a build here because we can see this in action. There'll still be a bit more we want to do, but let's do a build and run. So I've started a host and connected two clients, and now theoretically if I click in the scene, as you see here, it starts spawning in some balls with random colors, like so, and everyone sees it. Now if I go over to player 2, so this is a client, I can now click and everyone else sees it too. And I can do the same on player 3, I can click and do the same thing. So that all works. And because we spawned them with ownership, if I now leave on player 3 down here, and give it a second for them to actually disconnect, all the ones they spawned in will disappear. And same if I do that for the other player, all their stuff will go, and then we're just left with the host stuff. And if they leave then the server's gone. So. We now want a way, while the game is still running, so without you being required to leave, we'll make it so that you can hit the spacebar key and all the balls that you spawned in will then be destroyed. So let's see if we can get that to work. So inside of the ball script, we want to say, if we hit the spacebar key, destroy the ball. But if we want it to happen for everyone, we have to destroy it by the server. So we'll tell the server through an RPC that we want it to be destroyed, and then the server will do so, and everyone else will see it. So let's start off with an update method, private void update. And what I'm actually going to do here is go to the other scripts update and we can honestly copy most of this. I'll just take it all for now. And we don't need to do the ray casting and we'll change the input from get mouse to get key. And we'll change the key to key code uh, dot space and update the comments. I'll do that in a minute. And then we'll change the method name to, instead of spawn ball, destroy ball. And we don't need to pass in any data because it's just going to destroy it simply. And then we'll actually make the RPC down here somewhere. Server RPC, private void, destroy ball server RPC. And all we want to do here on the server side is destroy the object, just like you would do normally inside of Unity. So long as you're doing it on the server side, it will destroy it and then all the other clients will see it get destroyed. Just keep in mind, once you've destroyed it, it's gone for good. Uh, there is another option, so you could actually get reference to the network object component. And you can call despawn instead. This is all on the documentation that I'll link below. And by despawning an object, it will stay on the server, but all the clients will actually not see it anymore, it will be gone from them. And then you can call dot spawn again at some later point and it'll reappear on all the clients. So if you want to do that, that's how you do it. But in our case, we just want to destroy it. So now we're done and we'll be able to do the final test in a second. Let's just have a look back over. So on the client side, we say make sure it belongs to us. If the ball does belong to us and we hit the space key, then send a message to the server to destroy the ball. And then the server will destroy it. And then because the server is destroying it, all the other clients will then see it being destroyed. And this is how simple it is to do it. Let's head back into Unity, let it compile, and we'll do a final build and see it all working. 
So now that the build is done, I'll be able to go to player one and click in a few places. Same with player two and same with player three. So now there's all these things all over the place, but because we've given ownership to each individual client, the game will know which belongs to which. So if I click on the second player and hit space, all the ones they spawned in have now disappeared. And if I do it to player three, and if I do it to the first player, it all works as you'd expect it to. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. You now know how to spawn in objects over the network and handle client authority, as well as destroying the objects and despawning them. If you enjoyed the tutorial or found it useful, then please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Share this with anyone you think that might find it useful. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons, so special thanks to Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Sahila, Beard or Die, Benjamin Hilda, Kat from Garfield, David McDermott, Evan Maxey, Yoris Letter, Casey, Katinka Mom, Lawrence Simpson, Malvin Hal, Mike Miller, Mike Troop, Rack, Sam Marcus, Ulfrim, Andrew Williams, Chris Diplock, Fury, and Dario. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.